We are back for Chevy Colorado. Can't even remember, 2.8 liter, I think. So, 2000, I think I said eight or something last time. Someone told me that was the wrong year, but it doesn't matter. Parts are parts. I'm gonna put them together. So, I've got block all cleaned up, ready to assemble. Um, cylinders bored and honed. <clears throat> 0.5 millimeter over pistons. Ordered its engine kit from Rock Auto. Everything looks pretty decent. Actually, I think, oh yeah, this was engine tech, but the pistons were complicated. This thing could have went back to standard, but I couldn't find a good set of standard pistons, so. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so. Crankshaft is polished and ready to install. So I think the, someone mentioned in the comments the last time uh, PCV valve and the valve cover, which was probably that little hole right there. Obviously, this still needs cleaned, plugged up, and then it creates pressure or something or filth inside the engine clogs the rings everything else all this timing was broke and all this other stuff so it was just time for a for a rebuild um so yeah let's get it on all right so we've got crankshaft in bearings in everything spins good i sprayed these bolts just real lightly with wd and then put them in and when I went to torque them down, they just, what? and it always worries me. So I sprayed the holes with WD-40, blew out the excess WD-40 so it doesn't hydro lock. And I had some ARP um, lube on the shelf, some fastener lube. So I spread some on the end. So let's see if that works. I know that the lube changes torque specs and yada, 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 but I would also probably, if you're serious about building one of these things, um, probably replace these guys. So they're torque, torque to yield, not stretch to yield, something weird like that. Um, so they're technically reusable, but I hate reusing them. They always sound like they're going to break. So let's, uh, let's torque them up really quick. I'll put you on the stand. What are you looking at there? Let's see. All right. That's not bad. Let's try that. Um, first step is 18 foot pounds. I knew that wasn't going to work. Let's see. Oh, that's an empty bottle, that's why. All right, first stage is 18 foot pounds. 18 foot pounds, okay. Not a lot of torque at all. I'm not doing these in any specific order. I'm sure there's a spec on the order. I'm sure it doesn't matter that much. I'm gonna go back through, check everyone, make sure I got it. All right, let me go get my bigger ratchet and I will do 90 degrees. So next step is 90 on all of them and then 90 again. All right, let's try this. Oh, I guess I better start from one end so I don't get mixed up. All right. Sounds a little bit better. 
Still has that noise, 90. Actually sounds a ton better. 90, 90, 90, 90. All right, let me check the my specs and make sure it said 90 twice. Okay, so set you up again. Not like you got a good view of anything, but you'll be able to hear if I snap anything. So, 90 twice. Scary, scary. You fell, damn it. I need to get me a phone holder. Shit. See, mother fricker. Guess I can go back. Uh, I just forgot which one. Fuck. That's all it takes. Phone falling. That's why you don't film when you do this shit. I'm sure it was one of the first two. I'm gonna go back. Back. All the way, all the way. I just wanted to film it just in case the bolts broke. Eighteen, eighteen, eighteen. Ninety, ninety. All right, we're back to where we were. Let's restart. Get you away so I don't knock you over. Ton better with that lube. Okay. Okay. Went together and didn't snap. Crankshaft still spins, feels good. All right, we got all four pistons in and rods. So forward mark on all of them. And I think I explained it in a previous video. Let's see if I can flip this sucker. Ah, this is hard with one hand. Okay. So that is in a weird position where I can't see any of it. Let me get this on. See if I can still rotate it by hand. Damn. Okay. So when I tear apart an engine, I mark the rods, but I also face the number towards the front of the rod, just in case the rods are directional. So works with every engine. And that way when you hang the pistons, you put the number towards the front of the piston mark. So oil up the, I just use normal oil, oil up the uh, pistons first with the, the rings and everything, pop the rings on there, oil the rings, spin them around, yada, yada, yada. These were 18 foot pounds, and then I went with, they were 110, so 90 is pretty obvious, but I did bust out the torque angle gauge for 110 degrees. Um, oil the, just use normal oil on the bolts. Um, you'll notice I didn't do anything to the block, so if you're really worried about it, you can machine the block. This thing didn't blow a head gasket, it was just worn the fuck out. Um, but I don't really scrape them, I clean them up a little bit, and on the last video I took a sander, I don't even know where the sander's at, this block sander, cleaned up a block, 
and it did work but on that engine I rolled I guess I rolled an edge and we had oil leaking from like here to here something weird like that so I had to go back and fix that so sanders probably not a good idea unless you're really careful and you know what you're doing probably going to cause more damage than than you're going to do any good um I did bust out this Matco set. I think it's Mac. Oh, Mac. Mac tools. Ring compressor. I've had that around for a while. Piece of shit. Shame, shame on them for selling that. Um, don't use plier types on rings. Um, I did have to, I was trying to work with it a little bit. So the only one that I had for this size was this. And you oil the shit out of it it did work um, probably uh, so the last time I built an engine I vowed that I was gonna buy like an ARP or a conical spring compressor that's just one piece and I forgot to do it on this one every time I build an engine I'm gonna buy the specific ring compressor for it 50 to 70 bucks um, what's that in the grand scheme of things not a big deal so i've got a bunch of engines to build we'll see how many i end up with um got the cylinder head all machined so cbn on the bridge port let me see if i can nice and pretty that's your you got to take care of your head gaskets uh more than anything um those are the most important part so got the valves cleaned ground these are mild valves i think i have a video showing how i clean the cylinder head and then i machine it and then it goes back in the vat um for final cleaning and everything i don't i mean it's clean i don't get super crazy like if you look there's probably some dirt and stuff left down in there but um it's a whole lot cleaner than it was. So on this one, I could not vacuum test it. I got a Goodson vacuum tester. It did not work. One, you've got ports down in here that are EGR ports. Um, and then two, that Goodson vacuum tester sucks. So the next thing to make sure is Prussian blue. You can see that I've got a nice ceiling area right through there. If you were getting stuff done by a machine shop, I would buy a nice vacuum tester, not this piece of shit, which I don't know, it might've worked when it was new. Um, this is, and Goodson's a really good brand. I mean, they're the people that do this, so. But I don't like that vacuum tester. I'm gonna try to set my AC vacuum pump where I can use this on it but if you're getting machine work done by another machine shop I would always bring it back and take the vacuum tester and test all your ports but like I said on these you've got this EGR port all the exhaust ports are connected so you can't necessarily vacuum test these so Other than that, I trust the machine work. I'm going to throw it together. And, uh, yeah, just oil, normal oil on the valve stem seals. And that's about it. See how it goes. All right, so another day. I actually got my ass kicked on assembling the cylinder head because all I had was the uh, Lyle. I don't know if I showed that in the last video or not, but uh, Lyle valve spring installer so you just press down really hard on this it clips the uh clips the keepers onto the valves and could do it on this head I'm not sure why works on most cylinder heads so i busted out my little homemade c clamp with some square tubing on the end i was able to install all the valves except for three um, which obviously doesn't work. You need probably all the valves. Uh, so around here somewhere, 
I went and bought the Pro Form, which I did not use, but we're gonna try it. So, Pro Form valve spring compressor. Pretty expensive. But I went back and found one that I've been looking for forever because it's what I used in the machine shop for years and years and years. That's what I wanted. So, Matco CF-700. Love those things. Very hard to find, very expensive. Works every time, 60% of the time. Um, so, everything's assembled. Um, heads torqued down. It was pretty similar, so I did replace all the head bolts, obviously. Don't screw around with head bolts. Um, I did, I think I just oiled them. I don't think I used the ARP on them. So, we're going to call that good for this video. Um, long block together or whatever. I still have balance, shaft, um, oil pan, timing, all of that stuff. And I need to remember, go back and check my videos if exhaust, intake, anything goes on before it goes in the vehicle, not sure, but we're going to call it a day. We'll get the rest assembled next weekend and uh, call it good. Thanks for watching. I know probably kind of not the most exciting video. Maybe some of you are building in Colorado out there and hopefully this helps someone. Other than that, we'll get it in and uh, finish out the video. So check out uh, some of my other videos. I've got a couple cool engine builds. I just can't keep up with anything that I'm doing. There's too much stuff going on around here and um, getting pulled in a hundred different directions, but I'll eventually... I've got to get two of these high-performance motors built over the next couple months, so I'll finish out those videos. Like and subscribe, follow along, we'll see you next time.